The Lord spoke to me March the 5th, 2001, that we are already in the Great Awakening, third Great Awakening in America. And I know that that's not uh, something that you're going to see reported on the news. It looks like everything's going in the opposite direction. But I can truthfully say that we are seeing an increased hunger. People are wanting the Word of God. We are having more response than we've ever had uh, all across the board in every single area. But our Karis Bible College is one of those areas that we have had to turn away over 600 people this last school year who registered to come but couldn't find housing. So because of that, I'm building student housing as quickly as I can. I'm spending over a million and a half dollars per month on just construction. And we are gonna have two of our student dorms ready by the start of the 24-25 school year. But we've got the foundations laid uh, for six dorms. We're eventually gonna have probably 30 or 40 dorms. We're also gonna have an athletic center, a, Student Activities Center, Hotel and Conference Center, Performing Arts Center, all of the roads, the infrastructure, bridges. It's gonna be a huge project. And in order to accomplish this, I just need people to join with me. So if you're being blessed by this ministry, if you see that other people's lives are being changed and you wanna help us raise up new champions for Christ that are gonna go out and make a difference, I encourage you to go to awmi.net slash campus and you can see an artist rendering of what these buildings will be like. And there's also a place there that you can join with us and become what we call a foundation builder and invest directly in the development of this Karis Bible College campus. It would be a blessing to the students and also a blessing to you. So check it out at awmi.net slash campus. Welcome to the Canadian edition of Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack celebrating 55 years of ministry. We have found so much freedom and truth and the true gospel, the full gospel. Andrew makes it so easy to understand and to grasp. Just constant revelation all the time. It doesn't stop, it is amazing, it is amazing. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Tuesday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today I'm continuing a series that I started a week ago talking about the power of imagination. And I tell you, this has just transformed my life. This book is kind of the whole teaching on this. This little booklet entitled Believing is Seeing is just a brief introduction to it. We're giving this away as our free gift to you. We are asking for a gift of any amount for this larger book. And then we also have CDs, DVDs and a USB where I've taught this at a conference. And uh, anyway, I believe that this could really impact you. I tell you this teaching, not just my teaching, but the truth that God showed me has just revolutionized my life. And I could spend um, a long time just telling you about the change that it's made in my life. But just trust me that this, this has revolutionized my life. Uh, I was teaching yesterday out of Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1 where it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And I was making the point that all last week I was talking about what your imagination is, how you have to use an imagination to remember, and how that the power that's in the imagination so that the Lord said in Genesis chapter 11 that nothing that they have imagined will be restrained unto them. And I was wondering about if imagination is all this powerful, which I saw many scriptures that said that it was, why isn't it spoken of in a positive way? It's always spoken about casting down imaginations, that the imagination of people's heart was only evil continually. Romans 1.21, that they became vain in their imaginations. And then the Lord showed me that what uh, hope is, is a positive imagination. And so I believe that you can take every scripture that talks about hope. And boy, there's a bunch of scriptures on hope in the Word of God. And this is just talking about imagination. Hope is your ability to anticipate a positive uh, result in the future. Uh, and it says over in Romans chapter 8 that once you see something, well, then it's not hope anymore. 
And so those scriptures make it very clear that hope is always future tense. It's talking about something that can't be seen, and yet it's a positive expectation of good, which is basically describing what your imagination is. So I believe that uh, imagination is powerful, but hope is a positive imagination. And I was using this verse in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, that faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen. And I spent quite a bit of time talking about this yesterday, but if you don't have hope, then faith isn't activated to produce anything. Now that is a powerful, powerful statement. Most people will focus on faith. And I've even heard people before say something like, you know, are you healed? And they say, well, I hope so. And people will immediately say, don't hope, you need to believe. Well, it's true that faith is the victory that overcomes the world, 1 John 5, 4. It is true that all things are possible to him that believes. And on and on, we could go talking about how powerful faith is. But hope is what activates faith. And notice it says that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It didn't say the evidence of things that don't exist. They do exist but they aren't seen. And I tell you, this is one of the biggest hindrances that keeps people from receiving from God is because they are just locked into what they can see, taste, hear, smell, and feel. They're five senses. I talk about this a lot, but that's what the Bible calls carnal. Most people think carnal is is describing some gross, terrible sin and carnal includes all of those things, but the word carnal just means that you are being led by your five senses, or you're being dominated, controlled by your five senses. There is more to this physical, well, let me rephrase that. There's more to reality than just the physical world. There's also a spiritual world outside and also inside of you. And one of the things that has totally changed my life, I consider to be the foundation of everything that God has ever taught me is understanding that when I got born again, my spirit was completely changed and I am a brand new person in the spirit. And the rest of the Christian life is learning to educate my mind to what I've already received in my spirit and then learning how to obey and act that out in my actions. But understanding that there's not only a spiritual world out there, but there's a spiritual world inside of me that has, that's just totally revolutionized my life. I have a teaching on that entitled Spirit, Soul, and Body. Let me turn over to a passage in 2 Kings uh, chapter 6 that will illustrate this. And to me, this is just one of the classic examples of this. But 2 Kings chapter 6 is an instance where the king of Syria was fighting against the king of Israel and he would send his armies into the nation of Israel, and he was going to ambush the king of Israel. And every single time he did it, the king of Israel knew what was going to happen. And so he ambushed the king of Syria's ambush. And this happened so often that finally the king of Syria says, uh, there must be a, a traitor among us. There's no way that the king of Israel could know and always win unless somebody's giving away my battle plans. And so here in 2 Kings chapter 6 and in verse 12, one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elisha, the prophet that is in Israel, telleth the king of Israel the words that you speak in your bedchamber. Man, that's pretty awesome. Can you imagine how this must have scared this king to think that there was some prophet that was listening to every single word that he said? And so it says in the next verse, he said, Go and spy where he is, that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, Behold, he is in Dothan. Therefore sent he thither horses and chariots and a great host, and they came by night and compassed the city about. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, a host compassed the city both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? This is just the King James English way of saying that this guy panicked. He knew that they'd been giving away the battle plans of the king of Syria. And when he saw all of the Syrian 
armies, horses, and chariots surrounding them, he knew that, man, the jig was up, that they had been found out. And so he went to Elisha and he says, Alas, my master, how shall we do? And look at Elisha's response. In verse 16, he answered and said, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Did you know that most people, when, when they read things in the Bible, lots of times people read this like it's somehow or another a fairy tale. They don't think about it being real. They don't ever put themselves into that situation, and so they just skip over stuff and don't think about it. But think about this. If you had been giving away the battle plans of an enemy, and all of a sudden you see that enemy's troops totally surrounding you, you would know why they were there. You would know that somebody has found out that you were the spy. You were the one that was giving this out. And I guarantee you, you would panic. And when you saw that there was thousands and thousands of the enemy around you, and then you look at your servant, and there's only two of you, and there's, let's say, 10,000 of the enemy out there, and then Elisha says, Fear not, those that be with us are more than those that be with them. Did you know most people would think that guy's absolutely crazy? And this is exactly what they think of a lot of people who are truly believing the Word of God and standing on the Word of God. People that don't have the same perspective, they will look at us and think, you're crazy. Did you know I've used it as, as an example during this series that God told me on January the 31st, 2002, that I was limiting him by my small thinking. And since that time, in nine and a half years, we saw $130 million worth of lands and buildings and things built debt-free. And now we've embarked on a billion-dollar building program that we're going to be doing debt-free. And did you know many people just uh, think that you're crazy? And when I sit here and say that, you know, it's no problem. It's no problem. We're going to get all of this done, and we will get it done debt-free. There are many people that just look at me and think that I'm crazy, and it's because you aren't thinking. You aren't taking all of reality into account. You're looking at things only in the natural realm. You know, in the natural realm, there's no way that I could do this. It's certainly not debt-free. There's just no way in the natural. And people who only think in the natural, people who don't believe in supernatural intervention. They don't believe that the promises of God that, you know, if you give, it's given unto you and that God will supply all of your need according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. People that don't think that way, this is absolutely stupid. It's crazy. But I've already done so much more than what most people could have ever thought we've done. I know it's going to come to pass. I'm sure that if people, if, if you had been standing there and Elisha had said, Fear not, those that are with us are more than those that be with them. There's many of you watching this program right now that you would have thought that is an absolute lie because all you think is real is what you can see, taste, hear, smell, and feel. Your five senses. That's what the Bible calls carnal. You're dominated, limited to what you can feel, see, taste, hear, and smell, and feel. And so you just think that that's all there is to reality. And if you were correct, if there wasn't a spiritual world, well, then it would have been a lie. But see, because there is a spiritual world, and I could literally spend a lot of time proving that to you, but there's many, many, many examples in Scripture. And this is one of the great ones right here that shows you that there is a spiritual world outside of your ability to see and to hear and feel. There is a spiritual world. There are spiritual beings. Did you know wherever you are right now, there's spiritual beings around you? And I know some of you think, well, there are not. Why not? Because you can't see them? That doesn't mean that they aren't there. Man, there's many times in scriptures that angels manifested themselves. Matter of fact, over in Hebrews chapter 13, it says many have entertained angels unawares. And it's not just a few people. There's many people that entertain angels. And I believe that angels are probably more involved than what we realize. Even 
they probably manifest themselves visibly more than we realize, but according to Scripture, each one of us has an angel. It says that these young children, their angel in heaven does continually behold the face of their father. And so every one of us have angels assigned to us. There's spirit beings around us. There's also demonic beings around us. There's things happening in the spiritual realm. And I know many of you watching this program right now think, well, that's not true. Why isn't it true? Because you can't see it, because you can't hear, touch, feel. That doesn't mean that they don't exist. Did you know most of you are watching this program either through satellite or through some wireless connection or something like that, which means that this signal is being broadcast through the air. And did you know you can't see that signal? What you have to do is to take a receiver that takes that signal that's in an unseen realm. It does exist. It just can't be seen. And it takes that signal and then it accepts it, receives it, and then rebroadcast it. And when you see this signal is not when this signal originates. Did you know television signals, satellites are broadcasting constantly, but you don't hear it constantly because you aren't always turned on and tuned in to that signal. But it's always there. So even in the physical realm, there are things that do exist that we can't see. And according to the Word of God, it was the spiritual world that created this physical world. This physical world did not exist first. There was a spiritual world. Over in Hebrews chapter 11, the verse I was quoting earlier, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, faith, the elders obtained a good report. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God so that things which are seen, that's talking about this physical world, were not made of things which do appear. It didn't say that things that are seen came from nothing. No, they came from spiritual substance. They came from God, and God framed it. That means that He used physical, or not physical, He used things, but they were in a spiritual realm to create everything physical that we see. This physical world was created by spiritual beings, a spiritual being, and it was using spiritual substance. There is a spiritual world, not only out there, but inside of you. When you get born again, you have the nature of God living on the inside of you. You have Jesus living on the inside of you is what he said. He'll never leave us nor forsake us. You you will never be able to prove that in a test tube. They won't ever be able to take some kind of a sample of, of your inside and prove that God is in there because it's not physical. It's spiritual. But nonetheless, God himself lives on the inside of every one of you. And it's not just like that's a symbolism. It's not like this is an analogy. God Almighty is in you if you are born again. Man, that is, that is radical. But see, most people just, they can't believe that anything exists that they can't see. So this, here's saying, fear not, those that be with us are more than those that be with them. I'm sure that his servant, Gehazi, thought that Elijah was crazy because you could count the enemies out there by thousands, 2,000, 3,000, whatever. And yet you look over and go one, two. There was two of them in the natural. If all you believe is real, is what you can see, taste, hear, smell, and feel, then Elijah lied. Elisha lied. And see, this is what a lot of people think that faith people are. You're just lying. You say that you're healed when the doctor's report proves that you are not healed. Well, if all there was was the physical realm, then it would be a lie to say that you're healed when your body doesn't reflect it. But because there is a spiritual world and because in the spirit you have the resurrection power of Jesus living on the inside of you, Ephesians 1, chapter, verse, uh, chapter 1, verses 19 and 20, and then 1 Peter 2, 24, by his stripes you were healed. That healing is already an accomplished work in the spirit. It's not a lie if you take all of reality into account. If you take into account the spirit being, I am healed by the stripes of Jesus, whether my body ever manifested or not. Now, it's not going to be complete. It's not what we want until you get it out of the spirit realm and into the physical realm. But how do you do that? Well, faith gives substance to things that are hoped for, things that are in the future, 
and evidence to things not seen, evidence to things that are in the spiritual realm. They're real, but they just haven't manifested. Faith is what, it's a bridge. It reaches over into that unseen realm and brings it over into a tangible realm. But see, if you don't even acknowledge that there is more to reality than what you can see, taste, hear, smell, and feel, then you would be just like the servant here that says, what are we going to do? We're done for. In the natural, there's just no hope. But see, in the spiritual realm, what you have, the supply is far greater than your need. And so what Elisha did in the 17th verse, Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. So see, when the Lord opened up his eyes, this isn't talking about his physical eyes. His physical eyes were as big as saucers looking at all of these enemies out there and thinking about what was going to happen. This isn't talking about him opening his eyes. He wasn't standing there with his eyes closed. He is talking about the eyes of his heart. It's talking about his ability to see with his heart, his imagination. It was his ability to see into the spiritual realm. Most of the time when we are using our imagination, we aren't physically seeing anything. It's just information has been given unto us. And so we, with our heart, with our mind, picture those things coming to pass. Gehazi, his servant, I believe, physically had his sight opened up. Man, I've got some things to say here that I haven't got time to say, it, but I believe that this was the opposite of what happened to Adam and Eve. When Adam and Eve were created, they didn't have just five senses. They had six senses. They walked by faith. They saw things in the spirit realm. They weren't limited to just what they could see, taste, hear, smell, and feel. They had a sixth sense of faith that allowed them to see into the spiritual realm. And they were dominated by that spiritual sight. But when they sinned, their spiritual eyes closed and they became limited to just what they could see, taste, hear, smell, and feel. This is the opposite of what happened to them. They went from seeing into the spirit realm as a normal thing into just being bound and limited to this physical realm. But the, but the servant of Elisha, he went from being bound to this physical realm to having his spiritual eyesight open, and he was able to see into the spiritual realm. And did you know when he saw the horses and the chariots of fire round about on the mountains is not when they came. They were already there. It's not like all of a sudden God did something when Elisha prayed for him. No, it was there all along, and it was available that if you could believe, if you could believe that there's something that happens beyond your ability to see and perceive with just your little peanut-sized brain, if you could believe that, all of this power of God is available to us at all times. But most people just limit God to only what they can see, taste, hear, smell, and feel. They pray for a healing, and if they don't instantly feel healed, then they think God didn't do anything. There could be great things happening in the spiritual realm that you can't see or perceive. So you know what? It doesn't say that Elisha's eyes were ever opened. It, he, it might have been, I don't know, but it doesn't say that they were. He didn't have to see it. You know, it's like this little book, Believing is Seeing. If you ever get to where you take the Word of God and you prove that it's true and you get to where you are operating in faith, you can get to a place that when you believe something, that's better than seeing it. My own personal testimony is that, you know, all of the material things that God has given us, these buildings for our Caris Bible College, those things were on the inside of me at one time. I saw them. I'm the one who saw it and designed it. And I saw those things in my heart, not with my physical eyes. I saw them in my heart long before there was any visible th proof of it. And when I see the physical buildings, did you know, in a sense, that's anticlimactic to me. It's more exciting to me to walk by faith than it is by sight. And this is what Paul said over in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. He says, we walk by faith and not by sight. Sad to say, most Christians walk by sight and not by faith. Paul also said in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18, that we are looking at things that cannot be seen. Somebody might wonder, 
If they can't be seen, then how do you look at them? You look at them by faith. And this is what I've been talking about. You use your imagination to take the promises of God's Word and what He says, and you just let it paint a picture on the inside of you. This shows that there were thousands of angels surrounding Elisha. You put that together with 2 Corinthians chapter 3 where it says what these Old Testament saints had is nothing compared to what we have. Well, then that means that if Elisha had thousands of angels surrounding him, then I've got thousands of angels surrounding me. You've got thousands of angels surrounding you if you're born again. And this is how you paint a picture. And so you take the Word of God and and say God's... It, what we have is better than Elisha had. So if he had this, I've got even more. And you start seeing yourself surrounded by the angels of God, surrounded by the ability of God. Man, I am out of time. I'm right up against the break. I've got to say this quickly, but I'm offering this book on the power of imagination for a gift of any amount. We're, at, we're giving this little booklet that's a summary away as a free gift. And we've also got CDs, DVDs, and a USB. So please listen to our announcer as he explains all this to you, and please call our right today. All right, so in the name of Jesus, here we go. One, two, three. We have officially broke ground. Praise God. Thanks to the support of our friends and partners, Andrew has continued the expansion of our Karis Bible College campus so that we can raise up more disciples to take the gospel further and deeper than ever before. Because you play such an important role in raising up this next generation, Andrew has decided to give monthly construction updates so that you can see the progress of what your giving and prayers have produced. Visit awmi.net slash Karis Campus to see our most recent update today. Andrew is offering his booklet, Believing is Seeing, an Introduction to the Power of Imagination, as his free gift to you today. This offer is available in the US, UK, Canada, and Australia. Contact us today to receive your free booklet. Andrew's complete series, The Power of Imagination, is available in a newly updated TV DVD album made from our daily television broadcast. This teaching is also available as a book, CD album, DVD album, and as a USB recorded live at the 2016 Gospel Truth Seminar. Each of these valuable resources is available when you contact us. Or you can call the Andrew Womack Ministries Canada Helpline Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time at 647-348-2220 to order. Harris is taking it to the next level in Canada. We are raising up leaders in the body of Christ by equipping students to stand on the word and walk in their calling. I love Karis because it prioritizes the word and that's what changes you. We stand on the word. Karis is a life changer. I have grown so much in the area that I know that God has called me to. If you would like to be a part of this, go to our website at karisbiblecollege.ca to find out more.